This tutorial is about brainstorming a research topic. We'll go through the actions with an example using the tutorial, and then you'll have an opportunity to brainstorm about your own research topic, identify promising questions, and keywords or search terms. You'll begin with this tutorial, which will have an example of brainstorming a research topic, developing good researchable questions, and developing words and phrases, basically the search terms that will help you locate great information. And then you're going to use the brainstorming a, work, a topic worksheet to complete these actions for your own research topic, using the example in this tutorial as a guide. The first thing, though, is don't worry about getting it right. There's no right answer when it comes to brainstorming. This is all about being creative and coming up with as many possibilities as you can think of. And then once you have all those possibilities out there, you can look them over. And then you can narrow down your topic to what you're really going to cover in your paper or your speech. Also, it's never too early to brainstorm. You may be worried about this because you're not already an expert on your topic. No one is when they start doing research. But you begin with what you already know or the guesses you can make, the things you think you know, just based on stuff you've picked up here and there. Step one, you're going to draw a circle and write in that circle the main concepts related to your topic. As you can see here, my topic is college students and depression. Second step, think about the subtopics that might be related to your topic, and then you add those to this brainstorming map using their own little circles. So in this case, what I came up with was the causes of depression and the symptoms of depression and the treatments for depression and then the impact. Well, what do I mean by impact exactly? Let's move on to step three. Now you want to brainstorm about each of those subtopics and come up with some more specific concepts. So for instance, in the clauses branch of my map, I came up with a few things. I think some of the causes for depression might be genetics, might be some kind of trauma that the person has experienced, could have to do with financials, with job loss or other kinds of money problems. Then since we're talking about students, it might be academic pressure or family or life stress. And then as you'll see on the branch labeled impact, I thought, who? is impacted by this. Well, there are the students who are suffering depression themselves, probably their families and friends, and the healthcare workers they may interact with. And then, what about society? How does society react to this problem? How does society support people who are experiencing this problem? So you're going to do that for each of your subtopics. Step four, you're going to look at each branch or each subtopic one at a time, and you're going to brainstorm some questions. These are questions that are specific, things you don't already know, but things you could find out if you did a little research. So for example, I looked at the branch on impact, and here are some questions I came up with. Are college students more likely than others to experience depression? Which college students are most likely to suffer? How does it affect their academic progress? How are their family members typically impacted? And how has society or our government, local or national, how have they responded to this issue? You can probably think of some more yourself. So you're going to do this for each of the branches or each of the subtopics that you've come up with. Number five. You probably know that when you first search for information on a research topic, you want to focus on getting general background information. That's going to really help you do the rest of the research. If you skip over that step, sometimes you end up in a corner and don't really find what you need. So when you're looking for this general background information, you're certainly going to start by typing in broad words and phrases. Since my topic is college students who suffer depression, I'm going to use the word depression and the phrase college students in my first searches. But you need to be flexible. 
If the first set of search terms doesn't work, you're going to want to try some alternates. You can see the alternates I have listed here. The phrase mental illness, the phrase major dis depressive disorder, and the phrase young adults, which is another way to maybe talk about college students. Here's the bonus. That second item on my alternates list, major depressive disorder, it's something I'd never even heard of before I started to do research. But one of the first sources that I found used this terminology, it used this phrase, and I thought, aha, here's a phrase that the experts use to talk about depression. I think I might get some sources by experts if I use that phrase instead of just the word depression. Now, you're probably not going to find a source that covers all of the specific questions you're going to want to focus on in your paper, so you need to be ready to search specifically for the answers to some of those questions you brainstormed. So that will use a different keyword strategy. Here's an example. If we take the question, which college students are most likely to suffer from depression? The first terms I'm going to try are the phrase major depressive disorder plus the phrase college students plus the word demographics. Demographics is one of those technical terms, one of those terms that the experts use to talk about all the things that identify the differences among individuals. So some of my alternates for that are age, the word gender, um, maybe um, something like um, income or um, uh, whether they're going to a private school or a public school. You see, these are all things that might be different. So if we want to see which college students are most likely to suffer, we might want to serve on that terminology. Seven, you can also use the brainstorm map that you've created to help you narrow your topic. Here is an example. I took a step back and looked at all of the terminology I had in my brainstorm map, and I picked out some things that I thought were connected to each other and were also things that I found kind of interesting. So here's the example I came up with of a more focused topic. What are the experiences of depressive college students who are also parents? And what can colleges do to support this population? I hope you found this tutorial helpful, but now it's your turn. Use the Brainstorming a Topic worksheet to complete these actions for your own research topic. And you can use the examples in this video and in this slideshow as a guide. You're going to want to ask your professor for instructions on how to submit the worksheet for feedback. Good luck!